Hallelujah. 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 Just come on real quick. This is really quick. I'm timing myself. But I wanted to just come on really quick and just, uh, just be an encouragement to somebody because I just couldn't go to sleep. I'm just so excited. Got some great news from um, a friend of mine. And, you know, we ought to rejoice when we see others being blessed, being increased, because we know that the Father is not a respecter of persons. What he will do for one, he will do for the other. Hallelujah. We are to lift up our brothers and sisters. We are to be um, always in a posture of praise and worship and thankfulness that he is doing, meaning the Father is doing what he promised in the lives of those who trust him. Hallelujah. I just couldn't go to sleep. I, I just had to come on. The title I, I call this, I say, when Yahweh just keep going, boom, 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 boom. Hallelujah. <laughs> Marie said, I'll give you three hours. No, ma'am. I got to go to work soon. I am not staying up all, all night teaching. I just wanted to come, like I said, and um, just encourage someone. I'm not doing so much a praise report about me, but about someone else you know i've been praying for them and the father moved as he said he would and and just made their circumstances different sometimes you know we don't need a big change we just need a little change to en encourage us to keep going forward hallelujah so i want to read um second corinthians 12 9 through 10 and let this marinate in your spirit let this be a scripture that you carry throughout the rest of this day or the rest of this week rest of this month or year whatever you need but remember this like the picture says weakness going one way and strength going another and second corinthians 12 9 through 10 says but he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, I am strong. So you might be feeling like, you know, I just can't do this. I, 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 I don't have it. I don't have the capacity, Father, to do this. But he is saying in your weakness, that is when he is most strong because we will never be able to say honestly, okay, before men that it was us that did this thing. It was all our power and our might that did this thing because we know that we cannot do anything of our own power, of our own strength. And that is why he said, least any man should boast by his works that he entered into the kingdom. And I'm paraphrasing here. You know, people be like, well, they were such a good person. They were such a loving person. They were such a this and the next. And the word says, everybody is like filthy rags. There ain't no man righteous. We are all wretched. Hallelujah. There's no man who's going to say, I did so and so and so and so, and I did this and I did that, so I earned my way into the kingdom. No, because if that was the case, many people would have probably bought their way into the kingdom. But we know that there's only one way to get into the kingdom, and that is through Yahushua. That is through the Son of the Most High who gave his life for us. And so in doing, we understand that if we aren't worthy enough to take the due punishment for our sin, because truth be told, we all should have been on that cross, but we couldn't even handle that kind of pain and that kind of persecution. I mean, that was straight up torture what he went through. We as kids and as adults, we don't even want someone just to hit us one good time as a child or punch us one good time as an adult. We can't even take a good punch. Hello? Okay. So we understand that we and of ourselves cannot do the things that we need to do when it comes to salvation and when it comes to living a purpose-filled life. 
So for those of you who may feel that right now you are weak, there is something to rejoice about. And that is that the Father said, in your weakness, he is made strong. And there's nothing that can compare to when the Father goes boom, boom, boom. When he is taking his strength and he is knocking down every obstacle that you perceive to be an obstacle. I am learning to not call things obstacles and difficulties, but opportunities. Okay, opportunities and open windows and open doors for some new revelation, some new path, some new fresh wind to blow into my situation. Because a situation is only seated in your life for a period. It is not a permanent structure. We are walking. If you would just imagine walking this life out, literally walking it out. When you walk, do you stay in the same place? No, your feet go one in front of the other and you start to move away, distance yourself from the place you started at. Hallelujah. So when you are walking out your life, you are not staying where you once were. So don't look at your situation that is sitting in a certain spot or your circumstance as permanent as eternal you who are feeling right now and i know there are those who feel this way because i was feeling this way not so long ago it felt like these obstacles slash opportunities were popping up every hour but as soon as i would render it all to the father and i would say you know what this is just another opportunity for my faith to be built up, for my faith to be shored up. Ah, that, that, that right there that said something to me. I hope you caught that. To be shored up. Hmm. To be shored up, meaning that no matter what, this is surely going to stand. No matter what, this is surely going to come to pass. No matter what, this will surely be fulfilled as it was spoken before you and I were even born. So whatever it is that is claiming you to be weak, that is making you seem and appear weak, I want you to look at it like this. When I get to those points, I just realize this is as far as me, Zeta, can go. But I hold on to one who can go way beyond my short distance, my short-legged capabilities. You know, I ain't that tall. I'm a little... Uh, vertically challenged, like they like to say. I, I am not very tall, but I hold my hand is being held. My hand is in the hand of the one who has immeasurable height, if it were. I try to talk in ways that you can envision things and picture things. To all the short sisters out there that's got a tall man, you understand what I'm talking about. I went to the store the other day and this lady, she was a little taller than me. But there was a young man, he was very tall, that was there with a relative shopping. And they had gone down the aisle farther away. And I remember um, hearing her talking and I looked up and she actually had gotten the young man to come and assist her with getting something off of the top shelf. And she said to him, that is why I need someone tall like you to help me shopping. You and I are often in places and situations where we need someone stronger than we are to pull us through, to pull us up, to reach to that top level where our little short hands and arms can't get. Even if we're on our tippy toe, we still can't reach. We need someone who has a longer reach. You understand what I'm saying? I hope I'm making sense to you. I'm making sense to me. So tonight, this morning, this afternoon, whatever time it is you're listening to this, I pray that I can be the uh, gateway to show you how to get to that place, how to tap into the one who's stronger than you because our flesh, our spirit man gets beat down all the time and we are not like the Most High. We are not even like the Messiah. We are still man. We are still limited because we are limited not only by our bodies, but by our spiritual level. 
because we are not all knowing. We walk by faith and not by sight. And our eyes oftentimes see things that, you know, it, it makes us feel so despaired, so so down because we just seem, well, for lack of better words, we feel hopeless when we should always have hope, hold on to the hope that is within our Savior. Hallelujah. But he will always come and send someone like he's sending me right now because truth be told, I should be in bed. But I had to come on and just be an encourager to someone and say, you know, remember, he will always send someone to remind us that we are not in this struggle alone and that when we get to the point of being weak, that's really when we get to the point of giving our will over to the fathers. When we stop trying to be big and bad and strong, knowing that we are limited in our physical and spiritual strength, that is when the father is able to come in and say, okay, I will become strong in your weakness. Because as long as you and I think we can do it, he will step back and say, I'll sit here and wait for you to call on me. Because he needs us to always be reminded that he is the great I am. That we are still limited. You know, you got people out there talking about they are God. They are like God. Well, hey, you know, to each his own. But I know my limitations. And I know when I am at the end, and it has proven to me over and over again that when I relinquish my feeble attempts, my short-sightedness, when I just say, you know what, Father, I have physically done everything that you have asked me to do. I can't do nothing else without you. I can't go any further without you. I am relying. See, is at that point when I fully give up my will and I fully start to just Anybody understand what I'm saying? I fully get to the point where I just stop and I put up my hands and I sit down and I bow my head and I just meditate on him and I say, Father, I can't do no more. I, I don't know what to do next. And I sit there and I patiently wait for him to respond. And I can tell you without a lie, without a bat in my eye, without me trying to look funny and, 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 and tell you a fib and, and just give you some half truth. Let me tell you 100% real raw truth. No time have I fully given up and stopped trying to do it and do things I wasn't qualified to do. Did he not answer me? And I'm talking about right away. He would drop a word in my spirit. I would get a text message or I would get an email or I would get a phone call. Or he would instruct me to say, go and search this on the internet and I would find the answer that I need. I would find the injection of supernatural strength to make me become fully, fully, um, how should I say this? Fully aware, one, that I just had a moment of breakthrough where I tapped into his power because I know and I could testify there are many things in my life I did not do. Me, Zita, did not do that. It was only by the power and the direction of the Father through His Spirit that I was able to achieve these things. Do not let anyone tell you they did it. Because nobody did it in and of themselves. Whatever powers they tap into, they didn't do it of themselves. I am here to acknowledge and let you know everything that I have done, everything that I am doing, I have not done of myself. I am not that smart. I am not that strong. But one thing I am is determined. I am determined to see the fulfillment of the things the Father has promised in my life. And he has promised things that are far beyond my scope. He has promised you things that you know within yourself. You don't know how to do those things, but you have enough faith to trust and believe that the Father is going to provide step-by-step -step instructions on how to achieve these things. Why? Because they are to the betterment of the other non-believer who is looking at your life, who is wondering, should I give this Yahuwah, this Yahweh, this Jesus, this God, this the great I am, this the most high an opportunity in my life. They are on the fence, but they're looking at you to see what kind of witness you are. 
Are you going to say, I did this and I did that, but you you still serving some God? But you still saying, I did this and I did that? No, our words, remember, our words have power. Our words are bearing witness in the earth. And we need to give all honor and praise to the one who deserves it in every situation, in every circumstance, in every conversation. I want to just say this before I go. Be mindful, brothers and sisters, of who you're giving the credit to. It becomes a lifestyle. It becomes a habit when you start to change your speech. I have programmed my mouth and my heart to always give honor to the one. When I would say, you know, people would be like, oh, you did such a great job. And then I said, no, nah, the father... That's all the father there. That, that, the father. I couldn't do that without the father. I couldn't do that without his spirit. I couldn't do that without Jesus. I couldn't do that without Yahoo. I couldn't do that without Yahweh. I couldn't do that without the great I am. I am not that smart. Because you never know at that moment what the other person is going through. Because the, most of the time, when people are complimenting you on, especially something that you have done, they are curious and want to know how you did that. Because every human being has a desire to fulfill their purpose. Some don't do it the right way. Some take an alternate route. But everybody in the earth was born with a purpose, a purpose that nags at them day in and day out wanting to be fulfilled and oftentimes we gravitate towards people who are portraying the life that we want to live or who have achieved things that we want to achieve why because we are curious as to how did they do it and that's why people buy all these how to and help books and and they watch all these DIY or DIY DIY videos do it yourself videos like I just finished watching here on Facebook, knowing good and well I'm not going to do what they did, but I was curious as to how did they do it. Self-help seminars, self-help courses, this and the next thing. I mean, let's talk about my book, Be Free From Spirit Spouses. It sells so much because everybody wants to know how to be free. They want to know how, 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 how. And the minute you start saying, well, this is what I did, I did, and I acknowledge where your help comes from trust me if you acknowledge where your help comes from if you let others know it was by the grace and the power of the father who promised here in 2 Corinthians 12 9 through 10 that in our weakness he will be made strong and that you after you overcome all the weaknesses the insults the hardships of life the persecution and difficulties it says in the end of verse 10 for when i am weak i am strong that that's like an oxymoron when you're weak you're strong yeah because when i am weak there's a power that rises up in me that surpasses what i would have been able to do in my weakened state yeah in my weak state i could lift five pounds yeah i could lift five pounds but when I trust and believe and turn everything over to the Father, I no longer am able to lift only five pounds. I'm able to lift 50 pounds. I'm able to do something supernatural, if it, as it were. When I truly trust and understand where my help ooh, comes from. You Bible scholars, you know, what? Where, you, where your help comes from. Anybody know where your help comes from? Look up, look up. Where does your help come from? Okay, if you don't know, that's your homework. Figure that out. Study the scriptures. I will lift my eyes up unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. And where is he up? He ain't down six feet under. Well, he wasn't six feet. He was actually in a tomb. He ain't behind no rock. Hmm. So that in itself says that your help doesn't come from within, right? If your help comes from the Lord, it doesn't come from within, meaning within you. 
your natural being, your natural uh, body. It comes from the Lord. It comes from His Spirit. And His Spirit can only be made manifest fully in your life if He dwells within you. Because your spirit man and your flesh of its own can do very little. And don't you know that this life requires much? And when you have many gifts and you start to activate those gifts and you start to work your purpose in the earth for the kingdom, much, much, much more will be required of you. Much more than your physical and your spiritual man can take. I don't care if you fast all day, every day. I don't care if you pray all day, every day. Worship all day, every day. You will never come to the level you need to carry out and fulfill the purpose that the Father has for your life in this earth. Because you are not just dealing with physical, tangible things and beings. You are dealing with spiritual wickedness in high places. Hmm. And if you know anything about spiritual warfare, it is not easy. But oh, how how invigorating it is to get through a spiritual experience, a spiritual battle. Because when I go from one to the next and I come through on the other side, I just sit there in awe at how the Father just brought me through and how it elevated my spirit man to another level, how it strengthened me. Because if you were to think back to the battles that you've have had way, what, a couple years ago? Maybe a couple months ago and the battles you're having now? A couple months ago, you couldn't deal with this right now. A couple weeks ago, you couldn't deal with this right now. What I have been going through a couple years ago, that would have taken me out. But each battle gets me stronger and stronger. But I will never come and I will never get to the point where I totally say, okay, Father, I don't need your strength anymore. I can do this on my own. We will never get to that point as long as we are living in this flesh suit. So I don't care where you are right now. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what it looks like. Read it for yourself in 2 Corinthians 12 and 10. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight. Be happy in your weaknesses. Be happy when they insult you. Be happy when the hardships come. Be happy when they persecute you. Be happy in difficulties. Why? For that's when you are weak. But what? You are made strong. You are strong. Not of your own. But that is when the spirit of the Most High rises up in you. Because why? You're going through all that for what? What did it say in 2 Corinthians 9 and 10? For Christ's sake. Not for your sake. Not for my sake. But because you're doing it for his sake. Hmm. It's like, okay, I'm going to do this for Christ's sake. To be an example. And because I'm doing it for his sake. He's going to what? Remember I used it earlier. He's going to shore me up. He's going to shore me up. He's going to be, anybody do construction or, or, or you've seen like where you've got, um, you've got like a, a I, I saw it, I saw a picture of it just, just today. You know, you got a piece of plywood. I live in South Florida, hurricane and, and whatnot. And any of you who deal with storms, you may have seen this where you, you've got some plywood on a storefront and then you've got some wood at an angle. What's that, like a 45 degree angle or so? You know, it's, it's secured to the ground and then secured in the center of the plywood to shore up the plywood against the window. Picture that, if you will. So that is what I mean, to be shored up. Because you're doing everything you're doing for the kingdom, for the Father, for the Christ's sake. Just like it says in 2 Corinthians 12 and 10. For his sake, 
because you're doing it for his sake. You're going through hell and high water for his sake. You're not taking anything on of your own and saying, I did this. You're always saying and referring to the one who really gave you the strength because you're putting him first in all things. Even when you fall weak in your flesh, even when you fall weak in your spirit, man, you are strong. Be encouraged. Be motivated. Look at your obstacles no longer as obstacles, but opportunities. They both start with the letter O, right? If, I, if my spelling is right at this hour of the morning. Yeah, obstacles and opportunities. They both start with the letter O. Change your language. You know, I had to teach myself recently. I need to change my language and stop saying like, oh man, this, this roadblock. No, this wasn't a roadblock. It was a necessary detour. And when I look back, I'm like, I'm glad that that popped up because now it made me go another way. And while I was traveling the detour route, I picked up some knowledge, some understanding along the way that now I would need and realize if the detour was never in my way, I wouldn't have picked up that great gem of revelation, that great gem of knowledge. So we no longer have obstacles. We've got opportunities. We no longer have roadblocks. We've got necessary detours. We no longer have delays. We've got de, I should say, uh, derailment. Uh, let me make sense of that for you. We don't have delays anymore. We've been derailed. What do you mean derailed, Zeta? Well, if it is derailed, that means the train ain't going the way it was supposed to go or it's set out to go. Many of us, including me, I thought, you know, I would go down this way. I'd go this way, make a left, make a right, and then go straight. And then I got derailed. And I thought the derailment, which took me to the right and all the way around, up the mountain, down the valley, I thought that was a delay, but that was a derailment. That was what? Letting me go another path again to pick up gems, to pick up revelation, to spend time with the Father, to meet new people. If you go... Let me break it down like this. If you go the same way to work every day, what you going to do? See the same people every day. But if you take a detour, if you derail, if you come off the tracks, then if you go on the beaten path, you know, you go off road, like they say, for people who got like trucks and SUVs and they've got off terrain or off road vehicles, you, you don't stay on the good paved road. You just go off road. You go exploring, you see new things, you meet new people, you meet new opportunities. He says his ways and his thoughts are higher than ours. Again, we, we could only see to the edge of our nose. We figure this is the way I'm going. I'm always going to go down Highway 95 and I'm always going to come off on, 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 on Sterling Road and I'm always going to make that first right or that first left. But he's like, I'm going to put a derailment incident in your life. What is a derailing incident? separation loss many people have been separated from people and that was a derailment opportunity for you to go meet some new people come on somebody and try not to make noise at this hour many of you have lost your jobs and you man it's like the sky fell down but that was an opportunity for you to be derailed so you would go start that business or you would go seek and apply for the job you've been thinking about applying but you felt unqualified or you was like you know i i'm okay I'm, I'm making good money where i'm at but you really wanted to go try and apply for that other job well he derailed you from that job so now you are forced to go and apply for something and you were like i ain't got nothing to lose i'm gonna apply for that job i've been eyeballing now for six months for seven months for a year hmm. it's like you got to walk out on the water I know, I know how that feels. It's like you gotta walk out on the water. He's saying, come, and, and you, you, man, that's water. How am I gonna put all my weight on some water and walk out on the water? But what happened? As long as you keep your eyes on him, you won't sink. As long as we keep our eyes on the prize, we won't sink. I said in my last video, you got to stop adding people to the equation. The equation is just you and the Father, just you and His promise. That's it. 
Nobody else is in that equation. And when I keep my eye on the equation, the result of the equation that he promised me, I'm good. But the minute I take my eye off of that and I start adding other people to the equation, getting their opinions, getting their thoughts, hmm. when he has told me over and over again in dreams and visions, this is my purpose for you. And in my day waking hours, he has proven it and he has led me on the path to see that thing come to fruition. When I don't keep that in front of me and I start to add people to the equation, then real delay happens because I'm no longer moving forward. I have gone and taken a side step to the left or to the right because now I'm adding other people into the mix, adding them into the equation, and I'm waiting on them to now decipher something that the Father has given only to me. Everybody don't get the revelation you get. Everybody don't see your vision the way the Father showed it to you. There are few people who will come and speak into your life and say, this is what I see, and your job is to say, yes, that's confirmation, or no, that ain't nothing like what he told me. I don't know where you got that from. Either what they speak will be confirmation to you or it will be totally opposite to what you know to be true. But who's in the equation? Just you and the Father. Hmm. Hallelujah. Be encouraged, my brothers and sisters. Be encouraged. You may feel like you're weak, but right now you are at the place where everything can just explode in a matter of moments. I'm telling you, I live in the in the moments now. I, I don't live in the days and the weeks. I live in the moments because every moment something happens. Every moment the father will just go boom, 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 boom. Anybody remember the Flintstones cartoons from back in the day and they had Bam Bam? Anybody remember Bam Bam? He had this thing. He had the, the um, a big old club and he would just go bam, 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 bam. The father just goes boom, 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 knocking down walls, clearing a path in the forest for you to, to ride your, your chariot on or walk those beautiful feet upon. He's got a path. He's clearing the way. He's making a way out of no way. Truth be told, if we were to just testify, and I could testify all night, <laughs> my life is not the way I had thought it should be, the way I had planned it to be, the way I had dreamed it to be out of my flesh now. I'm talking my flesh dreams. It don't look nothing like that. And I'm so happy it isn't. Because I've had an experience of a lifetime up to this point watching his will for my life unfold. And yes, it's scary. I'm not going to tell you it's not scary. I'm not going to tell you that the hairs all over my body don't stand up and I'm just like so heightened and so alert and so aware. I can feel a shift in the atmosphere. That's how aware I have become. But it's exhilarating. And sometimes when it gets too much, then I just got to sit down, shut down, be quiet and just sit there and just... Literally, I just watched the wind blow in the trees. Anybody did that lately? You just watch something in nature, just do what it do, and just sit there in awe and say, wow. Or I look at the squirrels scurrying around, being fed by the fallen fruit from the tree, and I'm like, wow, they didn't have to go to the store. The father provided food for them, falling from the tree, and the squirrel is just as happy as he could be because he got food. And here we are worrying about this and worrying about that. And he's feeding the animals. Don't you think he love us even more than the animals? He'll take care of us. But we got to keep holding on to that faith and understand that just because we feel weak in this moment. Let me give this to you. Those moments when you feel the weakest. Remember 2 Corinthians 12, 9, and 10. I want you to just take a deep breath and push through. If you got to push minute by minute, hour by hour, say, you know what, I'm just going to get through today. And just go day by day. Watch the Father become strong in you. Watch the Father show up and go boom, 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 knocking everything out of the way. I mean, literally making a way out of no way. 
and you'll be like, man, I thought I was going to make that right turn. And he said, nah, keep going straight. And you, you like going straight. I don't see nothing. If I go, if I go straight, I, I can't see, you know, if you, anybody ever traveled on a road that that's like a hill and you go straight and then the hill you're going down. So, you know, if it's a flat road, you can see the horizon, but on when you're going down a hill, you really can't see the horizon properly because as you get to the top of the hill, you see the horizon and then your car dips down and then the horizon you just drop and your view just changes. Yeah, yeah, that's how it feels. But trust me, keep going in the direction he's telling you to go. It doesn't have to look possible to you. It doesn't have to look like it's going to work out to you. Just hold on to your faith and follow his instructions. Because when we try to do things our way, all we do is get tired, get frustrated. I'll say this to you. I, I, I know that I hear it all the time. I hear it all the time. It's preached about a lot. Mm. The spirit of delay. The spirit of stagnation. But how did they get in our lives? We brought them in there. We opened the door for them to take full reign. The spirit of delay and stagnation. We brought them into our lives. How? Because we wanted to do it our way. Hallelujah. We wanted to do things our way, so we caused the delay. We caused the stagnation. Just going round and round the same mountain. They ain't making no progress. We caused that because we've allowed those spirits into our lives by the things we have said, by the things we will not relinquish over to the Father. You see, when it's dangerous because when you get weak, and you get to that point where you don't know what else to do. You, you just gravitate to whatever your hands touch and, and the first sound or word someone speak to you. Instead of getting quiet and getting still and saying, Father, I've done all I can. I'm waiting on your instruction. I'm waiting on your direction. Well, Zita, what if somebody comes to me and says something and it still sounds crazy? You should always be prayed up and be able to discern a voice. Hallelujah. Because if anybody could just walk up to you, especially when you're at that point where you've given and surrendered all and you just follow any voice and you ain't sure, then you need to check your, your spirit of the spirit of discernment uh, level of activation in your life. But if you have a relationship with the Father and you constantly are keeping prayed up and the spirit of discernment is highly elevated in your life is highly functioning in your life when someone comes to you automatically know that is not instruction from the father because that's contrary to the path he has me on that don't answer the question i just asked him i always ask questions father what should i do with this i know what i need to get done i know what i need to make this happen i can't do it on my own Father, I need help, or I need some in, some ideas on how to circumvent this thing. Give me the workaround. And it comes. It comes right there and then. You too can have that ability, but you got to have a relationship with the man, or I should say the, um, the man and God all in one. You need to know the voice of your Savior. You need to know the voice of your Father. So that when any other voice is speaking to you, you could discern and say, that is not the Father's voice speaking to me. And for those who may not understand what I'm saying, sometimes he will speak audibly through someone else's mouth. It might sound like your cousin. It might sound like your friend. It might sound like your family member. But the spirit behind the voice your spirit recognize your spiritual ears will hear it because they speak it you know some people say boy you in the spirit man girl you in the spirit because when you start to speak you are speaking things that what that confirm what they already know in their spirit they just was waiting on confirmation because the thing that is in your spirit, the thing that's been bubbling up inside of you to do, that you know you of yourself can't do, you know that's the Father talking, man. Father gave me a dream. And he gave me 
Zeta, planning dreams and vision. I know I can't do them of myself. And when I see them take shape and manifest into this physical, tangible world, I only could tell people that it ain't me. That's all God. That is the Father directed me. All I was was a willing vessel to be used of Him. And I pray you get to that point. So that when you come, come, ah, uh, God help me. When you come into contact with things that are now opportunities in your life, and no, no, we're not saying obstacles, when there are opportunities that arise in your life, when roadblocks no longer become roadblocks, but you see them as necessary detours when they arise in your life, and when situations and, and relationships turn out to go haywire and you see it as an opportunity to be derailed from that destructive path that you were on. He's derailing you from that destructive path. He's taking you on a better path and you recognize it for what it is and you just shout, thank you, Father, hallelujah, and you give him a praise. You will no longer let these weak moments be moments to defeat you. You will no longer let these moments be moments for you to just curse God and die, like Job White said. Mm -mm. You will then see them for what they are, an opportunity for the Father to become strong in you. Because he wants to do a new thing. You know, as I was getting ready to come on here, I said, okay, Father, have your way. But as I have been talking all this time, this is the nugget. This is the nugget that I got out of all that talking I just did. This is what I just got for me. And maybe it's for you. And you get to that point of weakness where you have poured out everything. Because when you pour it out, then you become weak. When you get to the point of pouring it all out, that is when you know the Father is about to take you to the next place, the next level, the next tier. The next rud in the ladder, rung in the ladder, sorry, the next step. That's when the elevator is going to take you up a notch, take you up a floor, maybe take you up a couple floors, maybe take you all the way to the penthouse, who knows? That's when you are going to be elevated because now you are poured out. You no longer have anything. It's like you are literally a jug or a pitcher and you poured out the, all right, I'm going to say this and say good night. Do this experiment. Get a cup, a mug, a jug, a jar, and fill it up with some water from the faucet, not your drinking water, and pour that thing out. So you fill it up, right? I want you to walk away from the, from the faucet, water hose, whatever you use to fill it up, and pour the contents, the water, either outside or down the toilet or whatever, and I want you, once the container is empty, look at the container and say, okay, this container is no longer of use to me to water my plants or whatever. What do you got to do now? You got to go back and fill it up. That is what happens when we pour ourselves up and we become weak. When we've taken on the cares and the abuse of the world for Christ's sake and we have been beat down and we've poured out everything that we've got and we become weak, that is when the Father does what? Shores us up and fills us anew with his strength, with his power, with his grace and his mercy. If that is where you are right now, you are poured out and you feel weak, get ready. Here's the nugget. Here's the good news. Here's the great news. Get ready to be refilled again but with what fresh water fresh living water that should make you shout i know it's crazy hour in the morning but that ought to make you shout i know it does for me because every time i get to that point i say father i've done it all i'm poured out i don't know what else to do i'm ready to pull my hair out but i don't want to pull my hair out what do i do now and within moments, he gives me a thought. He directs my path to say, this is the solution. This is the way to get to the next place, to the next step. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I pray that this has been an encouragement to someone. Man, I thought I'd be here for 10 minutes. Been here for 44 minutes. But I pray that this would be an encouragement to someone. I pray that right now when you feel weak, when you feel poured out, and you don't know what else to do. I mean, you you have pushed that that boulder up the mountain. And you now on a ledge and you still ain't reached the top. And your arms and your legs and your back hurt. And you feel like, man, I'm just going to sit here and just, I'm just leaving it here. I ain't even got to get to the top of the mountain no more. I'll just, I'll just set up shop right here. When you feel like you can't go on, I want you to just get in a quiet place. Just be quiet and just pray and worship and thank the Father because you know that He is about to refill you with, with new revelation, give you more strength to fulfill your purpose. Hallelujah. Send help to push that boulder at the, all the way up to the top of the mountain. For some of you who may not understand this concept, when he gives you a vision, you are the one who has the vision. You are the one who sees the vision in its entirety from conception all the way to completion. But understand, you are not the only one who's going to work on that vision. He's going to send you help. He ain't never sent nobody no vision and they was a, a one-man show. Because the things that the Father has given us to do in the earth, it requires more than us to do it. That's why you can't say, I did this. I did that. I did it. I did it. I did it. No, because you understand you alone won't get the job done. Who am I talking to? Some of you understand. He's been putting it in your spirit. You need to talk to so-and-so. You need to go see about this person and maybe let them know. You need to you need to stop thinking it's all about you that you're going to get this thing done. People are going to come and you have to be able to recognize help when it comes. This world mentality of being a boss in some, and I should say in many regard, it is twisted. I worked in leadership a long time on many jobs for many companies. And the more I lead people, the more I understand it. And I've been hearing this quote over and over again on another platform and I've been sharing it on another platform. When you understand this, you've arrived to a really high place. When you own a company, your team members, your employees, they don't work for you. You work for them. Okay, for, for the ones who didn't catch that, let me explain. A real leader, his team doesn't work for him or her. They work for their team. Because without your team, you are nothing. Without your team, your business is nothing. Without your team, nobody will be looking at you and saying, man, you did a good job. And when they say, man, you did a good job, you always need to remember to say, it wasn't me. It was a team effort. I couldn't have done this without my team. They are the backbone. So for those of you who have businesses, for those of you who are thinking about going into business, do not look down on anyone in your team. Because without your team, your business is nothing. You are nothing. We are what? Kingdom builders. Going right back to the message. We are kingdom builders. Building the kingdom. Hallelujah. We are building a kingdom. And each of us have a role to play. And whether you think about it the way it, it really is, we all are connected. You may not think that, but we all are connected. 
We all are connected. Hallelujah. We all are connected. Someone said to me that they told their husband, and they listening, <laughs> that the father don't just put anybody in their circle. And that is so true. He doesn't just put us in circles with other people and connect us to other people just because we need someone to talk to. He has purpose, relationships, and connections for us. And we are building the kingdom. Whether we think we are or not, we are all connected. You may not understand how, but we are connected. Because the people in your, in your inner circle, at some point, your business ideas, your skill sets will overlap. And then when they won't, when the deed is done and there's no more need, they will be taken away so that someone else can come in who will need you to infuse into their business, to infuse into their ministry, to infuse into their purpose. Nobody comes in front of your path just because they was looking for a shortcut. Everybody finds you and you find other people at the right appointed time and season to do kingdom. So stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop feeling like you can't do anything else. Stop feeling like you, you, you done poured out. You poured out so what? You can be poured back into with fresh water, with fresh living water because you have new plants to water. They don't want no stale, stagnant water that you, you would have had in your pitcher or in your, your mug or even in your water hose for the past 10 years. 10 years ago, I couldn't water what I water now. I ain't had the experience and the, the trials and the victories like I have now. 10 years ago, I wouldn't be doing this at this hour of the morning. I'd be in my bed sleep. Do you think I'd be doing a live? At this hour, 10 years ago? No. 10 years ago, I'd be up underneath the, what? I'd be up under the covers. It's cold too. Well, South Florida cold. South Florida version of cold. I'd be up under them covers trying to stay warm. Not be doing no live, talking to nobody about when they weak, the father is strong, to be encouraged, trying to show them what it means to be a real leader is to work for your team because without them, you wouldn't have nothing to lead. Hallelujah. Just like how the Father, he works for us. He comes see about us, not us seeing about him. He's always coming to see about us. Hallelujah. So be poured out. Value the times when you're poured out. There's times when I'm on a path and I'm doing things and I can't wait for it to hurry up and be done because I'm ready and eager to move on to the next level. I'm ready and eager to see what next he got for me, what next he's going to reveal to me, what mystery he's going to unfold before my eyes. I understand I couldn't be where I am three months ago, though I tried to get here. I tried to be where I am three months ago. I really did. Anybody who really knows me, they know I, I really go hard. I go hard because I'm trying to get there. But as I was going through the process of arriving to this point, I realized every, every detour was necessary. Every obstacle was necessary because I picked up jewels along the way. It's like I was playing, you know, I was picking up gems and jewels and nuggets that now I have an arsenal, I have a bag, a suitcase full of tools to equip me for what lies ahead. See, I already know what's ahead of me. I understand at least a little bit of what's ahead of me. And I thought, I, I did, you know, the saying, cross that bridge when you get there. Nah, in the kingdom, there's no crossing that bridge when you get there. Hallelujah. Crossing that bridge when you get there, meaning I'm, I'm going to just fake it till I get there. And when I get there, I'll figure a way to fake my way across the bridge. No. With the Father, he equips you so that there's no bridges to cross. Hallelujah. 
You don't have a bridge to cross because he equips you with whatever you need for where you're going. I pray that this message has been a blessing. I pray that it's encouraged you. Please share this with someone so that they too can be encouraged and blessed. So that they can understand that where they are is where they need to be in this moment and nowhere else. That they were purposed to be at this breaking point, at this place where they feel they are completely weak. Only to understand that the Father needed them to be poured out so he could pour more into them. You don't pour stuff into a full a full jar, a full a full vessel. It's already full. There's no room to put nothing else in there. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this time to fellowship with your people, Father. I feel so humble and honored, Father, that you would even allow me the opportunity to speak a word into somebody's life, to just be a witness and a testimony to your goodness, to your faithfulness, to your power and your strength. I pray that the people that are listening, that they will find renewed strength in you, no matter where they are right now. Some might be at that point of feeling weak and unable to go on. Some might be halfway there knowing that I, I'm, I'm feeling myself being poured out. I don't know how much longer I can keep the pace. Father, I ask that you would encourage them right now wherever they are. I pray a blessing of increase upon everyone that will listen to this message and that would find you in a quiet place that would seek your face, Father. I pray peace that only you can give us. Not the peace of the world, but your perfect peace. I pray your perfect peace upon your people right now, Father. Hallelujah. Lift them up, Father, where they feel weak. Let them know, Father, that you are about to help them soar higher than they have ever imagined they could go. I give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. I thank you, Father, for all that you're doing in our lives, for all that you've already done, for every new dream and every new vision that you will reveal to us in these coming days, Father. While we sleep, Father, let us dream dreams and retain them. Remember our dreams when we awake. Father, keep our dreams vivid in front of us until we awake and can get true revelation and understanding. Do not let the enemy steal our dreams from us when we awake. Father, if there's any covenant in our lives that we need to break, Father, make it known to us this day so that we can speak with our mouths and break the covenant, Father, that have kept us with the spirit of stagnation and delay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give you all the glory, all the honor, and the praise that is due to you and to you alone. No one else will get your glory, Father, from me. No one else will get your honor and your praise from me, Father. I pray that that is a sentiment of everyone that listens to this audio, that listens to this video, that hears the sound of my voice, that they would give no one else but you the praise and the honor that is due unto you alone. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Yahushua, our Messiah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You guys be blessed. You guys be well. I pray you could sleep. I pray we all get some good sleep. I pray that if your day is just beginning, that it is one that is full of glorious opportunities. And that you remember there's no obstacle but opportunities. There's no roadblock but necessary details. Amen? Y'all have a great day.